Hey folks, this is Shane from Performance TV. Today, we're drawing wiring diagrams. Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us. So for those of you new to this channel, this is my project to put a Nissan Leaf motor into a Porsche 911. And over the past few weeks, I've been getting the wiring sorted and we've actually managed to get the, the motor running. But I've had quite a few comments from people asking me to go into a little bit more detail on the wiring to give a wiring diagram, explain some of the uh, components. Uh, I guess that makes a lot of sense. Um, looking back at the videos, there's a lot of me kind of waving my hands over things and there's quite a few uh, bits of uh, equipment that are involved in, in what I'm doing. So what I was going to do today is basically build out the wiring diagram of the um, mainly the low voltage wiring for controlling the uh, the Nissan Leaf motor uh, from kind of front to back all the components that are involved in things like the pre-charge circuit and that and just really get down on on the board here um, what's involved and then at each point we'll look at the the individual components and I'll explain a little bit about what I'm using and why I'm using it and yeah uh, we'll go from there. There's actually a really good um, thread that started on the Open Inverter forum which I'll include a link to below just going through some of the um, the components that you might want to use in these sorts of situations um, especially things that can be scavenged from some of the existing electric vehicles out there. Um, but yeah so mm, let's get started with the lesson. All right so I think first thing we're going to do is just draw out our main components um, and we imagine this whole thing is the car. So we've got our Nissan Leaf motor and the inverter, the three phase AC going to them. We've got our traction battery, which is high voltage DC. We've got our car battery, which is low voltage DC, 12 specifically. And they've got plus and minus terminals. Now, the 12 volt battery in a car is invariably grounded, so it is attached to the car chassis, which gives us something to attach to any time we need that negative 12 volts and the positive 12 goes out and we start to use it. So some of the 12 volt power will go out to the the car systems as a whole and there are lots of them and the other of the main components we have then is our low voltage control panel that I built up the front of the car. Now, I've tried to record this with me drawing as I speak, and that ends up with some very wobbly lines. So what I'm gonna do is draw each section of the wiring diagram out first, and then take you through it. So here we have our 12 volts going into the control panel. There's only one 12 volt input to it. So as long as this switch stays open, this first switch, which is a big red one on the control panel, there's no power going to anything else. When that switch is closed, two things happen. One is a 12 volt positive signal going through to the inverter, and this isn't actually a signal wire, this is actually providing the 12 volt power that the logic board needs to run. And it also makes 12 volts available to these other two switches. When the second switch is flicked on, um, that then sends 12 volts down to the inverter and that's plugged into the start signal. So this is only actually a momentary signal. It doesn't need to constantly be sending 12 volts. It just needs to send it for a second. And that tells the inverter that actually it needs to, rather than just sitting there in idle mode, it needs to actually start and switch on. And that makes it then available to do all the other things. The next switch is 
the one we're using for drive so when that gets flicked on it's not sending it itself isn't it sending a specific signal to the inverter but rather it is making 12 volts available to this final switch which is the rotary knob that switch has two contacts in it one or the other is it's always going to be closed on one of them so as soon as um, that gets switched on 12 volts will go through the um, one of the cables here one of which is attached to the forward plug on the inverter the other one which is attached to the reverse so effectively when this um, switch is open we're in neutral when it's closed you're in drive and then this second rotary dial decides whether you're in drive forward or drive reverse so looking at the actual switch panel we're mainly interested in this side of it these two relate to controlling the charging functionality which isn't something that I've even started to consider implementing they're just there because I didn't want to have to take it out again uh, once I had it built so as per the diagram we've got essentially four switches this is kind of the master 12 volt which gets switched on so this one takes um, 12 volts from the car battery sends it out to the inverter and also makes it available for the other two switches so this one we're going to uh, ultimately get rid of and that will be done by wiring the 12 volts that the inverter requires plus anything else uh, to the accessory position on the ignition switch so before I actually switch the car to on so the second last position um, that will send the power to the inverter then we've got our start signal so when it's closed while there is 12 volts going to it it's not uh, sending anything to the inverter when I flick it up that closes the um, closes the switch and sends 12 volts to the inverter this we'll get rid of by wiring that 12 volt signal from the um, start position so that you know that temporary start position on again on the ignition and then we've got the control of whether to send uh, forward or reverse information to the inverter so when this switch is off it's basically sending neither forward nor reverse signals which tell the inverter that it should be in neutral when it's switched on depending on the position of this switch it'll send either forward or reverse so with that up and it here that's forward switch it over that's reverse again this is going to get replaced by wiring it into the um, gear shifter so when we're in neutral that will be the equivalent of no power going through um, this switch then drive will be forward and our you know reverse will send power to the reverse so that's the low voltage controls the other thing that happens when this 12 volts is switched on is we start to send a signal to the high voltage controls so we do actually have a final set of wires coming out of the um, low voltage control panel and going down to control the high voltage systems. So I've relocated and shrunk the uh, battery pack in this diagram just to give me a bit more space to explain the high voltage control circuitry. So the high voltage circuit is controlled by a series of relays. So these relays are all in the normally open um, state and once um, a current once a current is applied across the two um, contacts so once you apply power to one side and there's actually a, f a flow of power through it that will cause the uh, relay to close and that means that this will then this is switch is effectively closed and power can flow through it so we've got six of these in total we've got the three main high voltage ones which actually control the flow of the high voltage power and then we've got the three 
smaller control ones that are effectively applying the power to the coil on these high voltage um, relays. So we, the way we've got the high voltage cables wired up is we've got the negative side feeding a single relay which if closed feeds to the negative terminal on the inverter. The positive side is given two routes, one direct to the inverter and one via a pre-charge resistor. So let's look at some of the components in a bit more detail. So this is our pre-charge relay. Um, this is an Omron G9EJ-1. Um, it's designed from the outset to be a pre-charge relay. Some people I've seen on you know, different websites and that where they've done conversions have used just a beefy uh, automotive relay and that can work. Um, it'll probably be okay most of the time but when you're designing these things you're not just designing it for the best case scenario you want the components to be able to handle it when things go wrong and an ordinary automotive relay um, if things go wrong with high voltage running through it would probably just fuse um, and either end up being unusable or not being able to switch it off sending too much power to the inverter things blowing up you don't want any of that so if you're doing this sort of thing and you want to control the pre-charge you need the pre-charge um, relay it's been designed for the purpose so this is Omron's unit um, I got it because it's the one I was able to find available relatively easily uh, when I was collecting the components um, but there are other ones out in the market so the Nissan Leaf uses a Panasonic one as does the um, the Chevy Volt or the Vauxhall Ampera, Ampera. Uh, generally these are 12 volt controls can take between 10 and 15 amps constant current and are usually rated to about 400 volts DC which is enough for what we're doing with this um, the other component of the pre-charge circuit is the pre-charge resistor. So this is just a resistor. All it does is really slow down the inrush of the initial inrush of current when you send when you connect the battery pack and its power potential to the um, capacitor which when empty is really just seen as a, as a, a short um, and the tendency if you didn't have this in place would be for a large inrush of current um, straight into the capacitor which then the capacitor can't take and will probably go pop. So the decision on what um, resistance is needed or what type of resistor you're going to need is based on kind of the specifics of your battery pack and of the capacitor um, that it's feeding into. For this purpose I've gone for a 150 ohm resistor. I paid a bit more to, for a 100 watt rated one um, which should be more than enough and is probably overkill for my needs. So beside the pre-charge relay then we've got our main high voltage relays also known as contactors. Um, I've yet to find a really good definition of what makes a specific high voltage relay a contactor in terms of what the cutover is. Um, Basically, a high voltage relay can take lots of current and lots of voltage, and a contactor can does exactly the same thing, but can take lots and lots of voltage and lots and lots of current. So again, these are Omron units. Um, I've got the same one for both the AC or for both the positive and negative. Um, I scavenged these from the power supply module of the Nissan Leaf. Uh, so they're part of the Chigemo fast charging circuit, which means that they're probably not quite powerful enough for um, driving this car with a full traction battery. Uh, what's sufficient for DC fast charging um, is still requires to be pretty powerful, but it's not going to be up to what is needed for um, 
the you know actually pulling power through the traction battery especially when you start to accelerate and the current levels go up so this is as i say an omron unit their g9 ea uh, range so it's 12 volt dc model um, so 12 volts powers the the coil uh, that's coming in through these two two wires here um, but it's only rated to about 400 volts dc on the main path and about 60 amps constant current uh, which yeah which it just isn't going to be enough it'll be fine for my testing when i'm just moving very slowly with these really small batteries but um it's not going to be sufficient when when we go to the you know the full model full uh usage generally then we're going to want a lot more headroom um in terms of the voltage and the constant current cap capability of it one of the popular models that's used um for EV, EV conversions is one of the Tyco Electric uh, Kilovac contactors. So they're used in a range of different purposes, but are particularly well suited for what we're doing because they've got a 900 volt um, maximum voltage and a 500 amp constant current rating, uh, which neither of which we'd expect to hit during the you know the driving of the car from my perspective i'm considering the the tyco electric units but i do want to see what type of contactor um, comes with whatever battery pack i end up buying to fit into this car because i'm going to have to strip it down anyway um, they might be good enough for the initial you know driving of this car but probably not as we try and get more and more voltage and current into the the leaf inverter each of these circuits is controlled by a 12 volt signal or by 12 volts and as long as there's 12 volts applied across these coils those contacts will close so one side of each of them is wired to the 12 volt neutral, the ground, and the other side is an output from each of the smaller control relays. And for each of the smaller control relays, 12 volts is the input voltage And for the um, negative contactor, 12 volts is also the, con the voltage going to the coil on the relay. Now controlling our high voltage relays, we've got three 12 volt relays, um, two different types. So one is a very basic automotive relay. Um, you can buy these on Amazon, eBay, all over the place. Um, not very complicated, but it does the job. Um, the coil is rated for 12 volts. The um, switching voltage is rated for 12 volts, and it, it does what it needs to. So this is the one that has just the 12 volt signal coming into it. Uh, with 12 volts on either pole and that's used for switching on the um, negative contactor. And then our two control relays for the positive side have um, essentially three pins coming in. So one is the, the negative that we've already shown, the other is 5 volts coming from the inverter and then um, a signal wire coming from the inverter as well. So we've added in our signal wires and five volts from the inverter. So we've got plus five volts here. We've got pre-charge and the main contactor. This is basically a software controlled relay. So these are again easily available um, generally used with 
people with um, things like Raspberry Pis and Arduinos and that sort of thing, where the board that you're using, say an Arduino, is providing 12, uh, 5 volts and ground to power this um, relay board and then just a basic open collector signal to one of the pins that relates to the relay. So this is a four relay board. You can get singles, twos, threes, a uh, range of different formations. I'm going to use the four one for the testing now, but I'll get a two relay version uh, for the final kind of high voltage junction box that I'll need to build out for this. Again, these are easy available. You'll find them all over eBay and Amazon, that sort of thing, and they are not expensive. So once the, the inverter's on, there's always five volts going to both of these relays. Then around the same time when it switches on, it also sends a signal along the pre-charge wire to the um, pre-charge relay, which will close. And that then causes 12 volts to go to the coil of the um, main pre-charge relay, which will close. And that will then cause the high voltage power from the battery to go through the resistor and into the inverter. That will charge the capacitor at a nice slow rate. And then once the capacitor is fully charged, the uh, inverter will switch on the signal to the contactor wire and switch off the signal to the pre-charge wire. So this will cause the main um, contactor control relay to switch on or to close and the pre-charge relay to open. These in turn will um, charge the coil for the main contactor which will close and turn off power to the coil of the pre-charge relay which will open and that will stop power going through the pre-charge resistor and send it instead directly from the high voltage power to the inverter. So after we've got the inverter powered up, capacitors charged, pre-charge relay switched off and normal power is going from the high voltage battery into the inverter we then ultimately want to turn our motor, um, which involves sending power down through the three phases of the AC side of the inverter. And the way we do that is by giving it a signal. And that signal comes from the throttle pedal. So we're going to have to pretend that this car is left-hand drive uh, because I've run out of space on the right-hand side of the image. So our throttle pedal basically, just for the, the detail of it, is the pedal piece here. There's a wire coming out of it that goes into a potentiometer here. And depending on how much the wire is uh, pulled depends on what is coming out of the, the pot. So what we've got here, and I'm going to simplify it, is we've got three three wires coming out. In actuality, there's two sets of three wires. They're doing the same thing. They are for backup. Um, so the first one is connected to the ground. Second one takes that same five volt signal that's going to the um, Arduino relay uh, it's taken that and is up there. And then depending on how the cable is pulled, decides what is actually coming out of the um, throttle pedal. And that's the signal that the inverter interprets as the um, what to do to the motor. So basically, when I first wired this up to the inverter, I could see what the baseline um, 
voltage was that was coming through on it and I could set something slightly higher than that baseline as the basically zero level of the throttle and then um, I pressed it all the way to full and that figure became the top level and then the, interp the inverter interprets in between those two in that range as to how much power to send to the motor. So I've been rather lucky in that even though this car was a um, mechanical throttle controlled when I got it so the engine that I took out of it had a cable coming all the way up to here um, to control the um, throttle response. Uh, this particular model of Porsche 911 and the Boxster that it was related to um, after the first couple of years this run actually came with an electronic throttle. Uh, so it's designed to fit in exactly the same position and on the same mountings as the throttle that I took out. So I was just able to buy one on eBay, put it straight in and um, it fits perfectly. Little mounts obviously where a pedal goes underneath the dash and then the actual um, control. So the potentiometer that gets twisted is actually mounted in behind the dash so off the steering column so i've just got it placed in there at the moment i do need to disassemble a bit of the a bit more of the trim so i can reach in and actually bolt it into place a pair of sensors each with a ground a five volt and a signal wire for pedal value sensor one the signal wire is white the pink is the ground and the brown is the plus five volt. So there we have it. That is the the wiring that I've been working on over the last few months all sketched up. Um, when I see it like that, I realize just how many moving parts there are in it. Um, but I've got it to a point now where it's stable. I'm going to need to rebuild it when uh, I get a proper battery in place because there will be new components. There'll be you know new uh, contactors um, there'll be different lengths of wire and all that sort of thing but um, I think getting it rebuilt will be much easier than getting it built um, likewise as I said we're going to ultimately get rid of that uh, control panel and wire it into the the actual controls of the car um, but I hope this has been helpful I hope it's made sense I know when probably seen like this um, because it's all one color, it's a little bit um, daunting, but I think as we went through it, I pretty much captured anything. So please let me know in the comments if this has been if this has been helpful. Uh, over the next few videos, we'll get back to working on the car. Most of the parts have arrived. I need to start fixing the brakes, so we'll get that done and then look at seeing if we can get it moving. Um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have and you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. Um, and yeah, as I said, leave a comment. Um, I, I always get a lot of value out of out of what's happening in our comment section. I think this this channel actually has a really good um, community around it now, um, with plenty of of good input, which is fantastic. Um, so thanks for all that, and um, I hope you join me next time when we try and get the car moving again. <laughs>